with party animals, developer Recreate Games takes the goofy joy of floppy, physics-based multiplayer games like Fall Guys, Gang Beasts, and Human Fall Flat and puts its own spin on them. Instead of falling in with the rank and file, Party Animals pushes the genre forward thanks to thoughtful attention to detail, creative levels, and its engaging comedic showdowns. Though, it does stumble over its inflexible rules and local multiplayer mishaps. You'll control one of these adorable, clumsy animals with a powerful right hook as you join up to seven other players in punching, drop kicking, and headbutting your way to victory in a variety of challenges. Their wobbly animations cause a sticky, moving through molasses like feel to the controls that might be a turnoff at first, but after a few rounds, it'll click. Doing just about anything in Party Animals has a short wind-up, but the delay eventually becomes satisfying as you watch your Party Animal launch itself into motion. It feels intentional and contributes to Party Animals' overall loose sense of combative chaos. Attacks all have a similarly long wind-up that contributes to the ragdoll-like feel of your chosen combatant. But when a blow connects, it feels less like a plush punch from a ragdoll and more like a powerful pound from a heavyweight boxer. Time even temporarily slows down to really emphasize the impact of a particularly potent attack before your cute little guy goes flying. With three modes, each with its own set of maps, there's a lot to sink your teeth into here. The main one is Last Stand, which distills party animals to its purest, most chaotic form. Each one of the nine maps feels small, but perfectly sized to house eight-player every animal for themselves bedlam. They all present you with distinct, clever environmental challenges to overcome and or throw your opponent into, like this cracking ice float. You won't just throw hands in party animals either. Giant lollipops, crossbows, tasers, nunchucks, and toilet plungers, among others, rain down from the sky to help whichever lucky animal picks them up wreak even more havoc. My favorites are the bomb, which might as well be ripped straight out of a Looney Tunes cartoon, and the nunchucks, which are a chaotic pickup that deal heavy damage very quickly, but might also smack you in the face. As players get whittled away, things start to slow down, but most of Last Stand's maps ensure that rounds never drag on much longer than three or four minutes on average. Every map becomes more difficult to survive as time stretches on, like in this giant wind tunnel level, where the levers you use to defend yourself from gale force winds snap right off, leaving you to get swept into the turbines like a B-list Bond villain. True, it's a drag to be KO'd early and have to spectate until the next match, but you can fling increasingly powerful items like fish, banana peels, and bombs onto the battlefield after getting knocked out. This will keep everyone engaged even after the earliest of knockouts. The second mode, Team Score, splits its eight maps in half. Four are variations on different sports like basketball, soccer, hockey, and American football. They're all fun party modes, but they're not really interesting or novel. The non-sports maps, on the other hand, all come with their own unique mechanics that run the gamut of playstyles. In one, you have to carry big chunks of coal to the front of a train to push your team's locomotive ahead of the other. They also allow you to sabotage your opponents, adding a welcome layer of chaos to the competition that keeps you from falling into a repetitive rut as you play the objective. Almost every single map introduces new ways to reward you for understanding party animals' floppy controls without ever leaving new or unskilled players in the dust. Finally, there's Arcade Mode, which is entertaining, but it's ultimately overshadowed by the other modes thanks to its relatively small list of just two maps. It's also very similar to Last Stand. The levels in both modes feature similar mechanics and design philosophies while avoiding the custom-built challenges and objectives found in Team Score. The only real difference is that Arcade Mode puts you into two teams of four with ten lives shared between them. That similarity is a little disappointing, but Arcade Mode does have my favorite map in all of Party Animals, Final Destination, where you're fighting for control of a sub platform in a stage that looks straight out of the Matrix. Throwing your opponent down onto the tracks before a train comes is really fun and makes for some tense and comedic moments. It's so amusing, in fact, that it makes me wish I could play it more consistently or just in other modes. But because Arcade Mode only makes up two of the 20 total maps in Party Animals, the online matchmaking that seems to pull randomly from the overall pool causes it to come up a lot less often than Last Stand and Team Score. It would be nice if Party Animals included a playlist system that let players opt into whichever maps or modes they like the most. One thing that sets Party Animals apart from other similar games is that it supports up to eight players, but that bigger scope can also kill a small party's vibe. While I spent the majority of my time playing in full lobbies, playing with smaller groups uncovered some confusing rigidity beneath the surface. Where other party games have dozens of options to customize rules like item spawn rate and score limits, Party Animals does not. 
It's missing the elasticity that makes a great party game replayable for years on end. This problem is at its worst in team score mode, where you can't modify even simple things like score limits. Playing with people who won't follow a map specific objective, or just who don't know how to play party animals, will result in matches that drag on because each map and game mode is designed in very narrow ways that don't always accommodate doing something the developers didn't necessarily expect. Local multiplayer is similarly stymied by eyebrow-raising decisions. Mainly, you're forced into four-way split-screen. Not only did split-screen cause frame rate slowdowns on my PC, but it also makes the camera much slower and feel less responsive. It seems like a fixed camera angle that shows the whole map would probably work better. I felt discouraged from playing with my roommates or inviting friends over to play a few rounds rather than just playing with them online. In 2023, it's frustratingly common for a party game to force local multiplayer into the back seat. Here, it's even hidden within the online multiplayer menu. These issues, though minor, point to where party animals need some post-launch love and care. I could very easily see a patch or update fixing a majority of them, and it seems like Recreate Games at least intends to support this fluffy mayhem for some time to come. For example, there's a full item shop where you can spend in-game currency, a progression system, and even a locker system that you might expect from a live service game. It's impossible to bring up Party Animal's item shop without gushing about the adorable cosmetics you can unlock. Almost every character has a variety of cute costumes. Many are cheeky nods to pop culture like this aviator jacket you can unlock for the goose. Others are just plain charming digs like this outfit for the tiger that makes him look like a champion fighter. They don't change gameplay whatsoever, they're just here to look cute. The version I played had everything unlocked for me already, but you'll need to earn in-game currencies to unlock this legally distinct Darth Vader lookalike costume for your angry duck. It's hard to say for sure ahead of launch, but between the Fortnite-like shop and the Waves Party Animal's multiple currencies are displayed, I have a feeling you'll be able to buy in-game currency if you'd like to unlock a specific costume. You can also use this blind capsule machine to buy random items. That's largely par for the course in a modern multiplayer game, but at least here you do earn currency skins and opportunities to play the capsule machine as you play. With smooth online multiplayer, a handful of mostly distinct maps, and downright adorable characters, Party Animals delivers a fun party game that brings cuddly, chaotic fun where it counts the most. The intentionally wobbly controls take a moment to get used to, but once you do, it's wonderfully satisfying to land a punch and send another player flying into an environmental hazard for a KO. It does commit an all-too-common cardinal sin for contemporary multiplayer games in making local play less enjoyable than going online. But all three main modes are still a good time, especially in a full lobby of eight players. For more, check out our reviews of Moving Out 2 and Pikmin 4. And for everything else, stick with IGN.